Every time I upload a video to YouTube, somebody will comment that anything I talk about is invalid and unrelatable because I have been on testosterone replacement therapy, TRT, for the last few years. They'll say, that is the only reason I'm no longer a big fat lump. I point out that I lost the weight long before TRT. And anyway, this channel's about motivation and entertainment. I'd rather people just focus on the jokes. So they come back with, well, the only thing funny is that steroids made you bald. So in my last video, with hair and a belly, back to pre-TRT levels, I chuckled to myself that at least they can't blame that transformation on drugs. They didn't. They said I must have stopped taking them. So for clarity, in order to get a fat dad bod, I didn't stop taking my prescribed medication, which meant I also used my asthma inhaler and even carried on wearing my contact lenses because I did not fancy walking around miserable, unable to breathe very well, and with blurry vision. Although every time I passed a mirror with that body, Blurry vision didn't seem so bad. In a way, this is a frustrating video to make because I like my content to amuse, motivate, and simply entertain as many people as possible, male, female, young, and old. A great comment I got on a video recently was from a Canadian millennial. She said, I'm probably not your target audience, but your stuff is funny and it gets me off my butt and out for a jog. Then a whole bunch of replies with other people saying the same. They also weren't 50-year-old large English men, but still enjoyed the channel. My message back was, if you watch and you laugh and you go and do something, you are my target audience. So while I know this video will be useful to some because I've done similar ones in the past, I also know it is a topic some might not be interested in. So if that's you, skip this one. That said, if you stick around, I'll do my best to make it as entertaining as the subject matter allows. Although. I might have peaked with that blurry vision joke. Okay, brief history. Three years ago, when this channel had only a few thousand subscribers, I made three videos on the hormone replacement therapy that I had been prescribed the previous year. Let me explain why I made those videos. First, I'm a YouTuber who does some fitness stuff. I'm not a fitness YouTuber. In fact, this channel was created to stick my motorbike videos on. If you have a Honda CRF250 and want to install a suspension lowering link, I've just the content for you. And we can now get access to the existing lowering link, which is here. I'm joking, do not watch that video. Actually, at this point, can we agree that my hair was pretty similar in the past to now, and therefore only disappears because I shave it off? Good, because I hate it being that long. So the channel moved into fitness because that's just what this YouTuber was doing. I had no qualifications, no training, no experience in fitness other than what you've seen me obtain here over the last few years. Ah! Ah! So it was never going to be a channel telling you how to exercise, what to eat, how to train because I had no idea. It's just, here's what I happen to be doing. But what I lacked in fitness knowledge, I made up for in understanding overcoming hurdles and getting to a better place. Anybody watching this channel knows about my weight issues, but I did not struggle with just that problem. Back in the past, there's all sorts, a divorce, a failing business, trying without success to help somebody close to me battling alcoholism, raising four children, or attempting to raise four children, nearly killing myself on a motorbike with a badly installed suspension lowering link. Seriously, do not watch that video. So what I tried to bring to YouTube was something creative born from having been in one place and got to a better one, 99% of which was done long before testosterone replacement therapy. So a part of me thought discussing it once I started it was a bit unnecessary. And does talking about a subject primarily of interest to middle-aged men then result in female Canadian millennials, for example, watching something else and therefore not having a laugh and going for a jog. Because if that's the case, it's counterproductive and unnecessary. But at the same time, I thought, what if one day, years from now, I have 10,000 subscribers and people start asking me very valid questions about it or flat out accusing me of using it. I know I'll do a few videos now, job done, and I'm glad I did because I got huge amounts of positive feedback on them. To this day, I get emails every week from people saying they're getting proper treatment, which they were prompted to look into for themselves from those videos. It's improved their lives. It's got them off depression medication, stopped them from losing their jobs, saved their marriage. If all that sounds dramatic, it's not. I know it's not because it's what it did for me. Now, if you want my full story on why I started TRT when I did, obviously go watch those videos. Otherwise, a simple summary is this. I was approaching my late 40s. I'd got myself into a fit and healthy place. 
Despite doing almost nothing but running an obstacle course racing, I had a fairly athletic looking body, and my performance in the sports I enjoyed was above average. For example, under 20 minutes for a 5k at 100 kilos, which was down from the 42 minutes it took me when I started running. So physically, I was very content and had no interest in changing how I looked or performed. I know that the jacked look has become the look associated with fitness YouTubers, which I'm not anyway, but it wasn't what I wanted, and still don't. To go into my mid and late 50s and then 60s and beyond carrying much more than 100 kilos, that just doesn't strike me as a healthy amount of mass for me to lug about. If you're 85 and 120 kilos and love it, great. For me, doesn't feel good. So body good, but head a mess. Everything around me was going great, but I was too often miserable and depressed. My doctor wanted me to go on to anxiety and depression medication. I would have days where I couldn't focus on anything. I was in bed until three or four o'clock in the afternoon. And my wife, at that time wife-to-be, was very sensibly on the verge of calling it quits because the tiniest argument would result in just huge issues between us. Here's an example. Mark, would you mind loading the dishwasher, please, if you get a chance? Me, I won't talk to you for a week and I'll lie in bed and eat Pringles. Trust me, she should have left. So I spend a year trying to fix everything. I nail my diet, my rest, my recovery, my sleep, and I do a variety of blood tests, which do show very low levels of testosterone. I investigate the solution to that and decide I don't want to inject myself for the rest of my life, so I carry on trying to get eight hours sleep at night, etc., etc. Until I realize, Jen is just not going to leave me, which means she'll probably kill me. So I decide to talk to a proper hormone clinic. A bunch more tests show nothing had budged with my testosterone levels, and so I begin therapy to bring them back to normal. More on normal in a bit. Within a month, I felt better. Within three, I felt good. A few years on, I still feel good. I'm not great. I'm not bouncing around and full of excitement 24-7, and Pringles still don't last long in this house, but I feel good. So this video is an update for those that keep asking for one and to answer a few questions that crop up often, which may genuinely be of interest to many. So update, everything is going boringly smooth on the hormone front. Some details, because to some, details matter. I take 112 milligrams of testosterone a week divided into three little injections using one of these, a little insulin pin, Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. I've tried slightly more. I think I went up to about 150 at one point felt no better and tried as low as 80 and didn't feel quite so good. So I've settled on the lowest amount I can get away with and still feel fine. I do blood work more than is necessary around every couple of months and everything is very consistent. I actually did my blood work for January just over a week ago and my total testosterone levels were 17.8 nanomoles per liter or just over 500 nanograms per deciliter. It's another unit of measurement often used. That is a blood test done on a Monday first thing. My injection before that test would have been on the Saturday morning, so it's probably a little bit higher the day of my injection and the day after, and then drops to that result just before the next injection. Either way, it makes my levels fairly average based on most current tables of average numbers. And there's lots of debate around whether those numbers are too low nowadays. They tend to be based on the average numbers that people are presenting with, and so if testosterone levels are just dropping in all men across the board, then those tables are gonna trend downwards over time. I know a lot of people on TRT would regard my numbers around 500 as being way lower than they would want. I don't care, I feel fine. For me, with any medication, it would seem sensible to take as little of it as you would need to achieve a feeling of good health. So some of the questions I get asked. Why is no one in the world of social media fitness talking about this topic? Money, probably. Many people on social media, on any platform, regard landing a sponsor or doing adverts as the holy grail of content making. They are also often trying to sell you training programs or supplements, and they use how they look as an advert for that. So them talking about using anything beyond protein powder might be upsetting third parties paying them money, or ruin their look at me sales pitch. It simply gains them nothing to discuss it. It's the same as movie stars. If they say nothing, then a certain amount of people will assume they're using something anyway, a certain amount of people won't know or care, and a certain amount of people will probably naively believe they are completely natural. If the actor comes out and says otherwise, the people that knew, knew, the people that didn't care, still don't care, and the people that didn't know, now think that person's a disgusting cheat. You can see why movie studios tell them to shush. Interestingly, the guy that plays Jack Reacher has come out and said he uses TRT. Not that one. Obviously, that 61-year-old man doesn't do anything like that. This is a nice moment. 
It's not ruining it. Alan Richardson. Now, how much testosterone and what else and when he started might be a bit unclear. Apparently, he only began after he put on 30 pounds of muscle for season one, but minor details. Details matter. At least he said something. Why has he gone down a different road? And is that now the start of other people speaking about it? Don't know. Would be interesting to have been a fly on the wall for the meeting that he had with his publicist beforehand. Maybe the demographic of people watching Reacher is skewed towards middle-aged men, and they just thought that was a safer audience to have that conversation in front of. One thing that is interesting about the situation is that a lot of people have said to me how good it is that he has been honest, or at least more honest, but I only sort of agree. The trouble is, Alan Richardson is a mountain of a man. Him being the poster boy for TRT might be good for clinics selling TRT, but I'm not convinced that the benefit goes much beyond that. And I really question if it will go as far as helping the men struggling with their mental health, for whom checking their hormone levels might well be a sensible step. But will they consider that step? Will they have discussions with their partners about it? Will they feel it right for them? Because if the perception is that TRT is what the guy did, who had already completed season one of Jack Reacher, and then did it to get even bigger for season two, is the guy that is lying in bed at 2 p.m. ignoring his wife, blanking his kids, phoning him sick to work, and plodding his way through donuts to make him feel something, is he thinking, oh, that's what I need? I doubt it. In an ideal world, it would probably be better if there were more 61-year-old men who aren't huge, but do look great and feel fit and feel healthy, saying they've been put on it. It's why I think it's important for people to understand that this is also somebody doing great on TRT, even if Marvel Studios are not knocking on the door. There is more to normal hormones than abnormal biceps. Right, so most people don't discuss it, so why do I? Because it just doesn't affect me financially. I've already turned down the money from third parties, from sponsors, from people asking me to advertise their stuff. I have no boss, aside from regular YouTube rules and regulations. No one's going to send me an upset email after this saying, hang on, Mark, we pay you to pretend that our protein shake is the only thing you supplement with. Nor is a gym clothing company going to be annoyed at me. Actually, I say annoyed, given I'm talking about this and I was fat in my last video, they're probably fuming by now. Now, to be fair, I'm not completely alone. There are, of course, other people that do discuss this topic on here. You've got guys like Greg Doucette, talks openly about testosterone use, and he's rich enough from his own products to not need to worry about third parties. And there's guys like James Smith, talks openly about having used steroids in the past, but again, doesn't do sponsored videos and adverts. And he's not selling his training programs based on looking anything other than fit and healthy. So it can be done, but the reality is, even if they would like to cover this subject, it's hard for many people to do so without financial implications, so they don't. How much does my TRT affect my sports performance? So having said that I did not require an increase to my physical abilities when I began treatment, did I get one anyway? No, but maybe. To explain, all of my measurable performances were on the increase when I started TRT and had been over the previous 10 plus years since I began exercising properly. I didn't start doing anything much until I was pushing 40 and didn't really begin to train with any serious intention until the COVID lockdowns. So it would always have been the case that my performance would continue rising until I guess probably my mid-50s, albeit at a much decreased rate. And that is literally what happened. Over the first 10 years of natural training, I made huge improvements in speed, stamina, strength, endurance. And over the last few years, that has all tapered off to much, much smaller improvements, but not yet started to decline, ignoring momentary blips like this current fat state. So to my eye, that graph doesn't look like it was impacted by TRT much at all. I guess some people could argue that without TRT, there would have been some sort of sudden decline in performance, but I don't know why, unless Jen did actually kill me, that would have done it. I think I've had very little gains in anything physical that you can say I wouldn't have got anyway. And the reason for that, and again, this is just what I think, I'm no expert, I don't believe I get anywhere close to pushing my limit in training, where if I did, TRT might have a bigger impact which comes on to the next question. What could you do physically with TRT? Well, certainly a lot more than I do. And this is where things start to get a little bit murky. And they aren't helped by the fact that testosterone doses can vary wildly from one person to another. From my discussions with other people on therapy, I'd estimate that my own level, 112 milligrams a week, is moderate to low. There are certainly people on around 100 milligrams, sometimes even slightly below that. And there are definitely people on an awful lot more. 200 milligrams a week would not be considered a particularly high level by many people. 
And those whose only objective is to get big will be taking way more than that, and not just testosterone. Once you're up to bodybuilder use, people taking a thousand milligrams a week and then other things on top is not going to be that strange. And different amounts taken yield different potential results. The problem occurs when the only people holding their hands up are getting results at one end of the spectrum, whether that's because of the level of dose they take or their genetic predisposition to how they respond to that dose. Back to Jack Reacher, if Alan Richson talking about this stuff does result in a bunch of similar actors doing likewise, then it will get increasingly important for people to understand that not everyone takes the same amount and not everyone responds in the same way to what they do take. It would be really unfortunate if the impression created by a small number of open people was that the results of TRT for everyone is massive muscles. In an ideal world, somebody who looks rather normal would speak about being on hormone therapy and allow people to understand that there is more to the medication than looking like a superhero. As an example, if anybody was to suggest Ryan Gosling used testosterone and pointed to his Ken physique, there'd be a lot of people saying, that is ridiculous, that physique is perfectly achievable without testosterone, and you can tell when people are using something and he clearly doesn't. But you can't tell. Not always. It's a bit like cosmetic surgery. Obvious use looks obvious. But for most cases, no one knows. Most people receiving TRT do not look like The Rock. Lots of them don't even work out. They just want to feel better. I should add, I'm not suggesting Ryan Gosling is using TRT. Clearly, that body is perfectly achievable naturally. It's like you're photoshopped. I'm just using him as an example of a fit and healthy person whose body shows no classic signs of steroid use. Which doesn't mean no steroid use. And I know what the internet is like, so I now have to put up a picture of Barbie, otherwise it all kicks off. So having established there are degrees to which people are being prescribed testosterone, or taking it, prescription or not, it is definitely fair to say you can improve your physique with it in ways that you might struggle to without, irrespective of how much you are taking. Especially if lifting weights is not something you've done much work on in the past. So you may well get in shape more easily, newbie gains basically. Interestingly, I found that my shoulders got bigger. It's a body part that classically responds to testosterone even if you don't train that muscle much. That said, in the last few years, I've also done more heavy gym work than the rest of my life combined. Probably helped too. Anyway, beyond that, it is gonna come down to genetics and training and diet in exactly the same way as it is for anybody else. Because I do no classic bodybuilder type training that would cause my muscle size to properly increase, I really only look more muscular when I drop weight and get lean. As an example, I look pretty average in my photos from a week ago, but I'm still carrying exactly the same lean muscle mass as a month before. That's diet, not muscle. And going back to pre-TRT days, was my muscle size much less than now? I don't really think so. Did you get your tickets? To what? The gun show? Now, if I did start lifting properly and eating right, could I pack on more muscle? Possibly. Don't know. Not interested in trying. Bodybuilding appeals to me as much as badminton. And actually, getting back to getting lean for a moment, does TRT help fat loss? Yes, that certainly seems to be what most people report back with. And certainly an increase in body fat is a symptom of having low testosterone in the first place. Although, again, it's more complicated than that. With low testosterone levels, I went from obese to okay. And on testosterone, I quite easily went from good to chubby in a month. So TRT is a factor, it's not the deciding factor. But I hear it helps recovery. TRT, in theory, is supposed to replace your natural production and therefore give you normal levels. How can normal levels help with recovery? So two things to note. First, many people will try to optimize their levels, not replace normal ones. I'm a member of social media groups of people on therapy and a lot of people are very motivated to reach levels it might be unusual to have naturally. And you'll hear stuff like, ah, but back when we were cavemen, our test levels were much higher, so I'm natural after all, all sorts of justifications. I mentioned earlier that I like to try and take as little as I need to feel good, and I didn't care about cavemen. But there are those who seem to take as much as they can before they feel bad. And even then, what's bad? Is a little bit of acne, sore breast tissue, elevated estrogen, wacky blood pressure, is that really bad? If your photos in the gym change room look good, Different people, different priorities. So some people look to optimize. And secondly, even if you don't do that, you still benefit as I do from stable levels. People producing testosterone naturally do so at varying rates. If you're fatigued and hungover and have been training really hard, you might have lower testosterone levels until you've fully recovered. I won't. 
I can be exhausted, go out, get drunk, stagger into the gym the next day, train like a lunatic, go home, take my regular dose, and my testosterone levels are fine again. I don't do that, either drink or train like a lunatic, but I could. Even towards the end of last year, in fact, when I was training really hard, I was never actually close to being so fatigued that the recovery benefits of testosterone were probably being utilized. I might have been training twice a day sometimes, but that's all I did that day. I imagine there are many people working manual nine to five jobs that expended far more energy before they clocked off work. So it doesn't make you fitter then? Yes, it does. Absolutely it does. Because for me, it fixes my head, which dictates how good my gym session will be, my track session will be, or even how good I will eat on any given day. How I feel walking into the gym, putting on my trainers, opening the fridge. If I do those things feeling good and feeling positive, good things happen. TRT means I feel good, and that is by far the most significant impact on my physical state. Fixing my mental state improves everything. Even this, as I pointed out to somebody recently, if you have ever watched any of my content and enjoyed it, then you need to know that it doesn't exist without me being healthy. There is no Mark Lewis YouTube channel without Mark Lewis taking the medication his doctor tells him to take. If you want this, ah! this is stupid. Why do anybody want to do this? I need this. Okay, some quick fire stuff to wrap up. Can you stop taking it? You can, but to me that'd be like removing the contact lenses and the glasses that I need to wear. So I have no plans to, and certainly not for six weeks while I get fat for a YouTube video. It's medication that my doctor has said I need, so I take it. The only reason I can think of stopping it is if you're really unlucky and you have horrendous side effects, or you never really needed it in the first place and you just get fed up with the expense and the hassle. Is it expensive and a hassle? No, it depends where you go, but my clinic is excellent and very reasonable. I spend more on protein powder than I do on testosterone, and it's just five minutes every Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. Is it the same as doing steroids? It is steroids. Whether you are taking 100 milligrams a week or 1,000 stacked on top of all sorts of other substances and then stepping on stage at the Olympia, testosterone is an anabolic steroid. It's also an anabolic steroid if you're producing it naturally yourself. Anyone that says otherwise just likes the idea of being able to regard the phrase doing steroids as being specific and particular to taking them for a certain reason. But again, that's just clouding the waters. The reality is you have people on low replacement doses as medication, and you have people on crazy high doses to alter how they look. And you will find somebody on every single dose in between of the same thing, testosterone, the steroid. And yes, that means there will even be an overlap where some bodybuilders with no requirement beyond bodybuilding might be taking a dose lower than somebody with a medically prescribed need, but having their doctor prescribe them a larger than average amount. And it's the complexity and the nuance behind those issues that really means this topic should be discussed way more openly, because with that would come understanding, and it's lack of understanding that causes the problems. The current situation is an understanding nightmare. Are you cheating? No, I don't think so. And I'm pretty clear about this because I've given it a lot of thought. I just don't do any sports now that don't allow TRT to a high enough level. High Rocks comes up in conversation a few times because I used to do okay in that. I've since quit competing in singles events, but even when I did, High Rocks has no drugs policy. Therefore, it doesn't test because there's nothing to test for. Some people hate that. They may well have a point and it might change in the future. But right now, it is what it is. Not liking something doesn't make it cheating. And even if they did introduce testing, it's likely they would do what most other sports do that have a huge amount of amateur competitors. They would have a policy for those elite athletes fighting for the top spots. For clarity, I'm not an elite athlete. And then they would either not test slower athletes, because can you imagine the queue that would be caused by testing the 10,000 people that run the London Marathon every year, or they would allow athletes to compete, and if they tested positive, because they did really well and got tested, they would let them apply for a therapeutic use exemption. Would you get one is a whole other thing, but that is the process some sports use. And lastly, am I going to, as some people have literally asked, Put up a disclaimer on all my videos explaining my medical needs and how that might make me different to you. No, I will also not be clarifying that you're probably not a six foot six, 220 pound English bloke with a history of obesity and a passion for donuts. I'm just gonna hope that people are able to realize everyone's different and trying to be like anybody on social media or anywhere else is a silly thing to do. I certainly say it here enough times because my content is not about do what I do and expect to end up achieving my results. And this sums that up perfectly. One of the best messages I ever received from a subscriber came from a 67-year-old grandma in Minnesota. 
She said, I am too fat. She meant herself, she didn't mean me, that'd be rude. My dog is too fat. Again, her dog, she's talking about herself. But I've watched your videos, Mark, and they make me smile. I want you to know, tomorrow, me and the dog, the fat dog, are going for a longer walk than normal because we are both fed up being below average. So thank you. I went straight back. No, thank you, Mildred. I forget her real name, Mildred will do. It's the perfect comment for me to get. She didn't get bogged down in exactly what I was doing in the video or how I looked or how I performed. She just took what she needed from the content and ran with it, or probably walked with it. So be like Mildred, who can separate the medication I need from the motivation she needs. That's it. I guess I do another update at a million subscribers. Until then, if you have any questions, stick them in the comments below. I'm always happy to have sensible conversations. I'm not an expert on anything. If you think I'm wrong, tell me politely. You might be right. But if you tell me you were just about to change the suspension lowering link on your Honda, and now I've mentioned TRT you can't because my video on it is invalid and unrelatable, you'll have me pulling my hair out, if I had any, which I don't, because I shave it off.